So now we're going to do the same thing, but this mapping will be going to R3. And really, you can just up arrow and change two bits of information. The IP address, which is going to be a .3, and the DLC, which is going to be 103. What we're doing here is we're saying frame relay map using IP as our layer 3 protocol. Here's our next hop or remote IP address, and we're going to map this to the local DLC, which we can see here is going to be 103. That's the one that goes to 3, and then we're going to enable pseudo broadcast. Okay, so we've got our hub configured, and you can issue the show frame relay map. I'm doing it from configuration mode, so I'm proceeding it with the do statement. So it's do show frame relay map, and it is down because we have not brought this interface up, but you can see you're mapping here. You're using IP. You're mapping to this remote IP address of 10.1.123.2. You're lo using local DLC 102. It's a static mapping because we've disabled frame relay inverse ARP. If we were using frame relay inverse ARP, this would say dynamic broadcast, pseudo broadcast is supported. We're using Cisco Frame Relay Encapsulation. Our status is defined and right now we're inactive. That's because we're not up. We want to see this turn to active and hopefully that will happen in just a bit here. Alright, so that's the hub. Let's pop over to R2. This is our one of our spokes. So we're going to do the same thing. Frame Relay, Map. Again, you're going to pick IP as your Layer 3 protocol and then the next hop address we're going to send this to the hub which will be 10.1.123.1 and then what are we going to do? We're going to map it to which of these DLCs? We're on R2 and we're trying to get to R1. Yep, we're going to use the local DLC, which is going to be 201. And then we're going to enable broadcast. So let's go over to R3 and do the same thing. And if you're looking at this and say, hey, you're forgetting something, yeah, I'm doing that on purpose. And if you know what it is, great. If you don't, you will in just a bit. So let's rip this guy out. Let's do frame, map, IP 10.1.123. One, and then our local DLC is going to be 301 and broadcast. So that's the shortcut to it. And if we do a show frame map, we can see we have it mapped correctly. We're using local DLC, broadcast, Cisco, and it's still inactive. That's because what we need to do now is go to all these guys and do a no shut to bring the interface up. And if everything's working correctly, we're going to give this a little bit of time to think about it. You can see on R1, which is our hub, the interface changes to up first. And now we should see the line protocol. So let's break out of configuration mode and start doing some of our verification commands. So let's first go ahead and issue the show interface to 0 slash 0. And we can see it's up and up. We can see that our encapsulation is frame relay. We can get a little bit of LMI action here. We can see that we've sent two. One has been received. That's good. We can look at that in more detail with a different command. I'll show you just a bit here. And here we go. Remember I told you that it was going to use Cisco AutoSense? So what happened was it sent out you know, Cisco, uh, Annex A, and Annex D, and it responded with ANSI, which is Annex D. So the frame relay switches in Dynamips actually speak ANSI rather than the default of Cisco. So that's pretty cool to see that in action, and it actually uses a different Delsi that it listens to. It's either going to listen to uh, Delsi 0 for ANSI and as well for 933A, or it will use Delsi 1023 for Cisco. So looking good here, let's go ahead and verify our LMI with our show frame relay LMI command. Hit enter, and when you're, we'll go through this in a verification lesson, but what we're really looking for here is we want to make sure that the number of status and queries sent is pretty close to the number received. We don't want to be missing inquiries, and so it is up, and we can see the LMI type again here. Everything's looking good. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our PVC. So if we do a show frame PVC, you can see that you can either hit enter, you can specify an interface, or you can also specify a particular DLC. We're just going to hit enter here because we're only running on one interface and we really should only have two DLCs. So I hit enter and I'm going to hit the space bar to get all this on the screen. So you can see our two DLCs, um, 102 and 103. What we're looking for, the real big bit here, is that we want to see active. Active means that we have end-to-end -end communication on that PVC, and we have it for both of them, so we're looking good. There's a ton of really good information in here. It tells you when the PVC was created, the last time it was changed. That's really good for troubleshooting. You get these statistics right here, so we could really just take a look at this and see that you know, we have two local active DLCs. You don't want to have anything in the inactive or deleted. Static's kind of a different beast. That's for back-to-back -back frame relay, and we'll discuss that later. But really, you're going to run into active, inactive, or deleted. Again, we'll go through this in a whole lot more detail with the LMI lesson. Deleted means there's a problem between you and the frame relay switch. Inactive means there's a problem between 
U and the other N. So in this case, it would be R2 or R3. But we're looking good here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our frame relay mapping. And we looked at this earlier. Only difference really here is that our status is active. We're up and good. Go ahead and test this out. We test layer 3 connectivity. We're going to ping R2 first, and it's good. And we're going to ping R3 as well. Booyah! So we're looking really good here. So let's check out our hubs. So I'm going to break out a configuration mode. I'm going to issue the same commands. Just going to go through it really quick here. So, so frame LMI, not limb. Everything looks good here. You can see here that it's sending status inquiries and it's receiving it. If we do the show int s0 slash 0, it is up and up. We can see that LMI is being sent once again. And we can see here that it did auto sense ANSI on this side as well. Our encapsulation is frame relay. We're looking good. Let's do a show frame PVC. And I'll show you my little shortcut here. If I do include DLCI, it just gives me this one line. Let me just go ahead and show it without that. So it gives you a ton of information here. And especially when you have multiple PVCs, if you have 15 PVCs on here, it's going to give you pages of information. And really what this does is just give me a quick and dirty. I see that I've got 201 is my DLC. It's local, of course. PVC status, and this is my most important bit, is active. So I can get a quick and dirty look here. If there was 15 of them, what's great is you can show all of these. They'll just stack on top of each other. And what I'll be looking for mostly is which ones are active or deleted or inactive. So we got the information here. So we're looking good. Let's go ahead and ping our... Oh, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at our frame relay map first. And we're active. We are mapped to our hub. Let's go ahead and not pint it, we're going to ping it, and we're good to go. So let's pop over to R3, and we're not going to go through all the verification commands here. We're just going to go ahead and ping the hub, and we're good to go. Let's pop back to R2, and now let's test our hub-to-hub -hub communication. What do you think is going to happen? Let me give you a clue here. That's our frame relay map. So now if we go and ping 10.1.123, if I type it right, dot .3, is this going to work? No, it's not. So it's going to fail. And the reason it's going to fail is that we do not have a mapping to the other hub. Network map here. So now we have spoke to hub communication. And then we have communication between the hub and both spokes. And so as I discussed, we do have to put in a mapping between these two spokes in order for our spoke to spoke communication to work. Before we do that, let's do a real quick debug here. I'm going to clear the log. I have, uh, oops, I don't need to, I'm not in configuration mode. I have logging buffer turned on, so any logs will be stored locally. So if I do a show log, it'll show up here. So what I want to do is I'm going to debug frame, and what I want is packet, and I don't need the interface, so just go ahead and hit that. And then I'm going to reissue my pings. First, I'm going to ping. The hub, I'm only going to send one, so it's only going to send one ping. Send that, I should see a debug. So that's what we should see when it's good. Let's go ahead and change that to R3 and see what we get. So now we're trying to ping from spoke to spoke, and we don't have a frame relay map. Let me do a U all. U all is just on, whoops, <laughs> on debug all. Screw it, U all. So now if we go ahead and take a look at this. So here was our ping to our hub, and you can see here. It's going out, it's going on Delta 201, it's IP, it's got datagram size, blah, blah, blah. Now if we go ahead and take a look at our failed attempt when we tried to ping the other spoke, encapsulation failed, no map entry link. So this tells me that I don't have a frame relay map set up for this IP address. Just as a caution, don't set up debugging on a production device. This is a lab thing. The debugs are great for showing how what's going on on the router and for troubleshooting. In a production network, you really don't want to set up a debug unless you know exactly what it's going to do and you have a change control and you've discussed it because some of these debugs will just completely peg your CPU and you will have effectively debugged yourself out of a network engineering position. So just keep that in mind. But like I said, it's really good to see these when you're messing around in the lab. All right, so we know what we need to do. We need to set up a frame relay map from R2 to R3, so our spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication can work. I'm not going to shut down the interface here for just adding a map. You should be good. So it's frame relay map. We're going to use IP. We're going to choose the IP address of 10.1.123.3, which is our IP address for our spoke. And now we need to 
put in the local DELC. Well, we only have one DELC here if we take a look at our map real quick. We only have 201, so we need to send it out 201. And we can skip the broadcast statement. I explained this in the lesson because we already have a mapping. Let's do the mapping now. Let's jump out. Go frame map. And you're not going to see any magic here. You just added another mapping. But we already have broadcast set up, the pseudo broadcast on DLC 201 with our statement that's going to the hub. So we don't have to do that again. So remember that when you're troubleshooting, if you look at this, go, oh, you don't have, you know, broadcast defined for this mapping. You do have to look at and see if there's anything else mapped on 201 and broadcast is enabled there. So we're active. So now at this point, should we be able to ping R3? You'd think so. Let's go ahead and clear the log. Although I don't know why we don't have a lot of information on there. And we're going to uh, get my debug again. Uh, there we go. Debug frame packets. And we're going to go through this again. We're going to ping our hub. And we see the good response. Now let's ping our spoke. And what do you think is going to happen? Because we got the frame map in there. We should be good to go, right? That's what we were missing before. We didn't have a map set up. Is this going to work? Well, it looks like it worked. We we get our encapsulation set up. We didn't get the encap failed that we got last time. We we look good. Well, how come our ping is failing? Do you know the answer to that one? Well, let's take a look at the map here. So we've set up a frame relay mapping from R2 to R3. We send out our packet. It goes out to a one. It gets up to R1. R1 gets it and says, oh, this is for the dot three address. I need to send this out 103. R3 gets it. So everything's good, right? Well, kinda. We've just enabled unidirectional communication. So for the ping response, the ICMP response to come back, it's gonna be sourced from 10.1.123.3 going back to 10.1.123.2. But the problem is, is that on this router, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's do the same thing. Let's uh, set up debug frame packet. Yeah, it should be frame frame because you're not really at the packet level and then we're going to ping 10.1.123.1 repeat one that's our hub Let's see if that works we got a good response looks like our encapsulation works now let's try two and we're getting the same thing as before encapsulation failed no map entry so what's happening is your ping is getting over to r3 but the ping response is not able to get sent back because it's saying oh i have to respond to this ping by sending a packet to the dot two address but I don't have a mapping for that. So that's the second downfall with the spoke to spoke mapping is that you get it configured on one side, but you got to remember to do it on the other side. And if there's multiple spokes, it's going to be multiple mappings on multiple devices. So let's jump over there and we can set this up really quickly. We go on the interface and we're going to do frame map IP 10.1.123.2. And then our local DLC is 301. And we don't need to put in broadcast. We should be good here. If we issue the show frame map, booyah. So now if we go ahead and ping this guy, actually I'm just going to up arrow, we get a good response and our encapsulation looks fine. So that's it for configuring a simple hub and spoke network. What you have to remember, let me pop back to the diagram here. The most important thing is getting your frame relay map statement set up. So on the hub, obviously, we're going to have mapping statements to both of our spokes. And we're going to enable broadcast on there because we want to have broadcast working. On the spokes, it gets a little weird because, you know, it's logical. Send it to the hub. What you might be thinking is that once we have this configured to go to the hub, that anything on this IP subnet is going to automatically be sent to the hub. That's not the case. Frame Relay, you have to have a distinct map for each next hop IP address. So, so if you had 15 more routers on here and they're all on the same subnet, you would have to have 15 unique mappings if you wanted spoke to spoke communication. And then of course, once you get one side set up, you're going to want to go ahead and do that on your other spoke so that you have complete end to end communications. We saw all of that when we were testing our 